Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to another video of the TypeScript series. We are trying to aggressively move into the TypeScript world and I'm trying my best to push as many videos as I possibly can. So another video in the TypeScript series. In this video, we'll be talking a bit about the union type. And I really am not looking forward in the series that I just go ahead, give you what is union type, and that's it. I really want you to write better code in the JavaScript. And that's the whole idea of the TypeScript series. So I also try to do some of the examples that we use in the production, and that can help you to write better JavaScript code with more contextual understanding. Some people don't like it. Some people just say, hey, give us the syntax, and that's it. For that, you could have read any article or documentation, but this is the real knowledge. A lot of people don't like it. Probably they haven't written any production level code. But again, this is the way how you should learn with a contextual understanding. And by the way, I've also got a new mic. After thinking a lot, I ordered it. I'm pretty sure those who are hearing it in headphones or probably in a good speakers can easily notify and understand the difference that we have moved from last video to this one. Great one. So here we go, we have got a new file, which is myunion.ts. Union is a really one of the fantastic thing in the TypeScript, which allows you to be into a situation where you are not pretty sure what type of data is going to come in. It might be a number, it might be a string, but you are not sure, it can be either of the two. Now, instead of using any, I, it is highly, highly recommend that you try to use union type. Union is like a combination of two or three or more types of data that you can include into a variable or an array and whatever that is. And this is the only video you need to watch about the union. I haven't broken down this video into five different videos. It's just one single video. It will help you to understand a lot of context. And yes, it will help you to avoid any into your TypeScript code. So let's go ahead and work on with that, that how it actually works. And yes, some of the examples uh, are just code based, uh, assuming that you're building any game or maybe a banking application in JavaScript. So let's just say if we have a simple score, this is how it goes. And you're saying that my score is going to be 33. That's fine, nothing bad, nothing bad, no big deal. But you are not sure that whether this is always going to be a number or it might be some of the cases that it might be a string as well. I don't know why, but it can be possible. So in that case, so far we have been going through and put up an annotation that, hey, uh, we want it to be a simple uh, number all the time. When you do this, this is all fine. But you can use a pipe sign, which is just above your enter key on the right side, and you can use a string as well. Now it is recommended that you try to keep it very strict, as much as strict as possible, because there is nothing that is stopping you to put up more data type, or in fact list down all the possible boot, uh, the data type that is available in the TypeScript. But use it wisely, use it carefully, it can allow you to do such things which can be really useful. For example, here if I go ahead and say, hey, uh, this is score, is going to be now 44. That is totally allowed, no problem at all. It can also allow you to do some things like score is going to be 55, but this time is a string 55. If I go ahead and do that, no problem at all. If I go ahead and remove this and I save this, yep, there is a problem. There is a squiggly line here that says, hey, whatever you're trying to do, this is not good. So you shouldn't be doing that. But again, this is how the basics of it work. Hi, I noticed that 70% of you haven't subscribed to my channel. It would be really a great motivation for me if you hit that subscribe button. So go ahead, hit that, and now let's carry on with the video. Now this is not just the basics of it, you can actually use this uh, boolean type, or this uh, union type, not boolean, union type with your own custom derived data types as well. For example, you are building an application which has a multiple hierarchy of user and admin and you want to define a strict type for that. So for example, let's just say we have a type of user that we are defining and user always comes with a name that is going to be a string. And apart from this, we will be having, uh, let's just say an ID, which is going to be a number. No problem at all. Let's go ahead and duplicate this code as well. Oops, command D. Ah, come on. Didn't install the shortcut for that? Ah, probably not, okay. So this is going to be an admin. So let's go ahead and say this is admin, but instead of having a name, this admin has a username. Now it could be string, it could be another data type, but whatever that is, it's totally allowed to have this. This is a type that you have defined. It's not a literal type that we see like numbers and boolean, this is a type that you have defined. So we have two types, now let's go ahead and create a variable for, or maybe an object, whatever you like to call this one. Uh, let's just say I'm defining my name as a simple uh, user, uh, but it could also be on some days an admin or maybe on, eventual future it could be admin we can go ahead and simply say that oops we can go ahead and say that hey you since you are a user you'll be having a name 
So let's just say name is going to be my name. And you should also have an ID, which is number. So let's just say this is your ID. So there is no problem, no problem at all. But eventually in the future, I can go ahead and say that, hey, now Bitesh is going to act as an admin. So he should have a username instead of this. So I'm totally allowed to uh, just redefine the things. For example, I can go ahead and say, hey, now I have a username, maybe an HC. And I also have an ID. Maybe I'm using a same ID for some purpose. So 334. This is totally allowed and TypeScript is not giving you any problem for that. But on the other hand, if you go ahead and try to remove that, Hitesh cannot or can never be an admin, then obviously we see that there could be an error here. But if I go ahead and hit the command Z that it can be admin or it can have multiple uh, types of data, then it is really, really useful. Now, this kind of a thing uh, could be really, really useful for writing the functions because sometimes there are situations that function either accepts multiple values or sometimes returns multiple values. So the syntax remains same. We have discussed quite a lot about function, but let's just go ahead and have a simple more discussion about it. Let's just say this is get DB ID. Uh, so you want to get some database values or some database ID from here. And uh, don't know, uh, somebody is passing you an ID. There is more uh, like calculated ID in the database that you are storing. So this could be a simple number. Uh, that somebody is passing you, but it could also be a string. So there could be multiple ways of how the things can go up here. Now, in this case, if somebody gives me and I do a simple console log and I say that uh, DB ID is, and then I simply go ahead and use this and I say, hey, just print the ID. And here we are making uh, some API calls and you're doing a complex uh, application and something. This is totally allowed. This is all good. There is nothing wrong in this one. And when we use this one, uh, this method now, get DB ID, I can go ahead and pass on a three here, or I can go ahead and pass on a three just like this. It is accepting all the values. But the problem, the problem here comes up with uh, something uh, when you try to do some manipulation with this one. So let me go ahead and uh, comment this out. First copy this and comment this out. And we'll actually go up here and paste this up. Now notice here, uh, what I am I will try to do is I'll remove this one and the above one I've kept for your purposes so that you can see what is happening. But let's just say I take this ID and I just apply a to uh, upper or to lowercase, lowercase like this. Uh, why the squiggly line? That is the point. Why a squiggly line? Because I have told you this is a string. If I go ahead and remove the number, squiggly line goes away. Uh, but if I go ahead and put up a number, and the, the fun part about the TypeScript is it knows so much. So it, if you hover this up, it says property to lowercase doesn't exist on type string and number. So it is treating uh, it is treating it not just as a number or as just a string. It is treating it as a new data type that could eventually end up into a number or a string. So both of them are a possible use case. If you remove a number, then it's fine that, hey, these kinds of methods do exist. But you need to do a really strong check uh, because right now, notice here, the parameter ID could be string, could be number, could be really a problematic. So if I go ahead and say that, hey, I'll just cut this out. I'll first verify that what is happening. So I'm going to go ahead and say use an if clause that if ID or the type of ID is equals to, let's just say a string, then I go ahead and do this, then no squiggly line. And if I go ahead and say ID dot, uh, maybe what, what the values of, or I can just go ahead and say ID plus two. So it is totally allowed because it's a number. Uh, so it says uh, cannot be applied to type string. Uh, so I've already checked it for string, but it could be a number here. So I need to verify that whether this is actually a number so we can perform the operations. So here the squiggly line goes away and we can check it out similarly that it could be a number. And then in case of the number, then go ahead and perform the numbers operation. But in case of this is how the lower case is, then go ahead and just use that. So really the same line of code, but if you go up here, the ID here is, or if I hover on this one, notice here, it just says now it is 100% string. It's not maybe because you have put up an if condition and based on the if condition, I'm 100% sure that if you are reaching this line number 30, that means you have already verified an ID is 100% a string here. But if I go ahead and try to put it up as number, then it knows that this kind of a block is going to get enter only in the case when the ID is actually a number. 
So you get the idea that how this is being done it needs to be a, a narrowing down of what the number type is. Uh, that is basically your union narrowing. And again, there's there could be a lot of discussion around it, but you get the point that you need to check it and verify the type if you're writing a better code in the functions of this one. So really a vague example of how to get the IDs, but you get the point of how the union type is there. It's not just simply a word that, hey, just add a pipe and do it. It's more about how you implement those pipe in your code. Now with these unions, uh, we also can actually have a small discussion about the arrays because this is where actually it becomes a lot more fun. So for example, let's just say, or let me just go ahead. Yeah, const is fine. So let's just say we have a data and in that data we have seen that already if you want to have all the numbers so we can just simply say hey we do have number and this is going to be a number of array or array of numbers and then we simply go ahead and say that hey I'll add up a values like I'll be adding one two three and let's just say I add a value of a four then it's a problematic because you cannot have strings because it's an array defined only for numbers. So this is definitely not allowed. You cannot do this. And if I go ahead and say that, hey, this is going to be a string, the numbers are not allowed. You have to wrap each number with the string. So then it is allowed. But, and let's just call this one as data two. But if you want to have both of them, then it's an interesting one. So data three, I don't want string, I want numbers as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and say, hey, pipe and number. And you see no error here. Uh, like there is a small error, but I'll walk you through what this is. This is a classic mistake that a lot of new TypeScript developer does because this is now saying that, hey, uh, this is can be either a string or a number. So notice here, a lot of people come up here and say that, hey, this, and this removes the error. This is a classic mistake. This is a classic mistake. The interpretation in terms of uh, arrays in TypeScript, this is, is that it can be either all the numbers or can either all the strings. So it cannot be a mix, mix match of let's just say three. This is still not allowed. This is not allowed. So it can either be all numbers or all string. The syntax or the way how you do it is actually you remove this and you wrap this up inside a parenthesis just like that. And there we go. Now you can have both types in your array. You can have strings and you can have number as well, or probably you can add more as well, maybe for some crazy reason, you want to have all the values as Boolean as well. Uh, let me just go ahead and word wrap this. There we go. Now you can go ahead and add even a true, whatever you like. Again, this is a very, very uh, not thing to do, but yeah, a lot of people does that. And also I've noticed a lot of people just when these kinds of situation happen, they just go ahead and do any, which is not going to give you any error. But the whole idea of using the TypeScript is not just that hey, you remove all the squiggly lines. It's about how you're actually making your types more strict. That is the goal behind that. So I hope you remember that. And there's also one more uh, classic situation, uh, let me walk you through, that you can actually allow some of the numbers to be very strict. Uh, something like there's a pi and you want that it should always be 3.14. And then you try to allocate it a value of, you can only allow to have a 3.14. So later on, if you just try to have a value of a 3.145 or maybe something, it's not allowed. So this is a literal type of assignment that yes, this should only have this value or something like this. This is not a useful case. Uh, let me give you a useful case scenario where this could be really, really useful. Maybe you're designing an application for an aeroplane. So let's just say there's a seat a lot allotment and you want to have only three types of value to be coming into this one. So you can go ahead and say uh, there's going to be an aisle or it can be a middle or it can be a window. So this is really helpful and useful case scenario. So later on, if somebody goes ahead and says seat allotment is going to be uh, aisle, that is fine. But if somebody tried to override that with a seat allotment of, let's just say, uh, somebody is giving you a crew seat, uh, which is specifically meant only for crew, uh, then it's not gonna allow. So yes, there are use cases that it can be only three types. Really fast, really quick, uh, can make your application really secure and less prone of the error. So you get the idea how this is being used. Yes, we can have a little bit more discussion about the union, we can go further, but I think all these use cases will help you to write better code into the JavaScript or TypeScript. Let's go ahead and catch up in the next video.